this free flight would end up being the passenger's worst nightmare. For the 20 attendants working on the Japan Airlines plane, it was so far routine. The aircraft, headed for Paris, was now ready to serve breakfast. The flight attendants reheated the ham omelets and began their meal service. The passengers woke up, hungry after several hours of flying, and excited to eat a freshly prepared breakfast. Little did they know, these eggs would derail their entire vacation. The omelets had such a severe effect on people that the plane had to make an emergency landing as its passengers fought for their lives. In 1975, Tokyo, Japan, 344 excited passengers boarded a Japan Airlines plane destined for Paris. Most of the travelers were salespeople for Coca-Cola and their family members. The employees had won a vacation to Paris, and Coca-Cola had arranged a flight on a Boeing 747 aircraft for the trip. The route had three legs that began in Tokyo's Haneda Airport, had a stopover in Anchorage, Alaska to fuel up, then crossed the Arctic to land in Copenhagen, Denmark before finally heading to the final destination, Paris. Including stops, the trip would take roughly 20 hours. The passengers would be attended by a crew of around 20 people. The first leg of the trip, Tokyo to Anchorage, went smoothly. The plane then flew over the Arctic Ocean and entered European airspace around breakfast time. Earlier, sandwiches had been handed out as a meal, and now flight attendants prepared a second meal for the passengers and crew ham omelets, an hour and a half before the plane was set to land in Denmark. The pilot and first officer working on the second leg of the flight had been staying in Alaska, so they were running on a different internal clock than the plane's schedule and weren't craving breakfast. Instead, they preferred to have steak for dinner. But for the passengers, omelets were heated up and distributed. People ate as the aircraft got closer and closer to Kastrup Airport in Copenhagen. They were only 30 minutes away from landing when it was clear something was was terribly wrong. Almost 150 passengers were suddenly violently sick, nauseated, vomiting, and suffering from diarrhea and cramps. There probably were not enough bathrooms to accommodate the sudden high demand. One flight attendant was struck as well, but the two pilots were thankfully fine and were able to make a quick landing in Copenhagen. Most of the travelers were so severely ill that immediate hospitalization was necessary. The Paris vacation they had felt so lucky to win was turning out pretty grim, and they hadn't even reached the destination yet. But that was the least of their worries. Sick passengers were taken for emergency medical care as soon as possible, but there was a problem. None of the doctors in Denmark spoke any Japanese, and very few of the passengers could even speak English, let alone Danish. Where could they find people who could translate? Thankfully, Japanese restaurants in Copenhagen were contacted, and Japanese-speaking employees were summoned to the hospital to assist during the crisis. 30 of the plane's travelers were in critical condition. The cause of the severe food poisoning was suspected to be the breakfast omelets since people got sick quickly soon after consuming them. But authorities needed to take a closer look before saying anything for sure. There was also an interesting pattern of who got sick. People who sat in the very back of the plane were fine. All the passengers who got food poisoning had sat in the front section, including those in first class. An investigation was launched, led by the Alaska State Health department. Tests made on samples of vomit, stool, and leftover ham omelets picked up a bacteria called Staphylococcus aureus, known more commonly as staph, and high levels of toxins produced by the bacteria. The culprit was indeed the breakfast omelets, but where had the contamination come from? There were strict guidelines involving food preparation that should have made this impossible. Investigators traced the history of the breakfast meals and discovered some uncomfortable things. The meals were stored in conditions that would have made it very easy for bacteria to reproduce and produce toxins. After being made, the breakfast sat in the kitchen at room temperature for six hours. And even though the meals were placed in a fridge for over 14 hours after that, the fridge temperature was not low enough to be safe. It's recommended that food be stored at 40 degrees Fahrenheit or 4.4 degrees Celsius to stop the growth of bacteria, but the omelets have been stored in a refrigerator at 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius. They were taken out and stored in the plain ovens, again without refrigeration, for another 8 hours before being reheated and served. 
All in all, this adds up to over 28 hours of storage without proper cool temperatures to ensure food safety, plenty of time for bacteria to grow and release toxins. But while these storage conditions were less than satisfactory, they would not have caused illness on their own. The investigation team decided to look closer at International In-Flight Catering, a branch of Japan Airlines based in Anchorage, and where the meals had come from. They learned that three cooks in the Anchorage kitchen were involved in preparing the meals, and one of them had prepared all the first class meals and the one that went to the front galley or kitchen. The airplane had four galleys to serve the different areas of the plane, and only meals that came from the front ones made people sick. One cook had handled Danish canned ham that went into the omelets and had helped prep 220 of the plane's total 354 meals. 86% of those who ate his omelets suffered from food poisoning as a result. The cook was wearing bandages on two of his fingers, and it turned out that under the bandages, he had lesions. He was aware of his blisters, which is why he covered them up, but didn't think they were important enough to report to his employer. Furthermore, investigators found out that his managers did not confirm that he was in good health, even though they were required to do so. Tests revealed that the lesions were infected with the staphylococci that had made everyone ill. It takes only a hundred staphylococci to cause food poisoning, so it made sense that people had gotten so sick so quickly now that we know how long the meals were sitting out and accumulating toxins for. The toxins are also heat resistant, so the heating process of the breakfast did not destroy the contamination. But it wasn't just the cook's infection that was to blame. If the omelets had been stored according to proper food and safety guidelines, the entire food poisoning outbreak would have been prevented. It was the fact that the cook had a staph infection, combined with the managers not verifying his health, and the improper food storage all combined that led to this outbreak. If just one of those factors were taken out, or the cook had worn gloves, the whole incident could have been avoided. It was very fortunate that the plane's pilots opted for dinner over breakfast, a chance preference that helped them narrowly avoid illness. If they had eaten the omelets and gotten as sick as some of the passengers, they may not have been able to even land the aircraft safely. Ever since this incident, many airlines implemented a new catering policy for cockpit crew members to eat different meals prepared by different staff to prevent a food poisoning incident from taking everyone out of commission. Though the sudden illness before even arriving at the destination definitely puts a bit of a damper on a romantic couple's getaway or a family vacation, at least no one was too severely affected, or so everyone thought. Though the contaminated omelets hadn't directly resulted in any loss of life of any passengers that got food poisoning, there is unfortunately one fatality in this story. Kenji Kuwabara, 52 years old, was the manager of catering for Japan Airlines and vice president of international in-flight catering. The investigators of the Japan Airlines food poisoning incident were very direct and honest in their approach to determine how the outbreak happened. They strongly emphasized that nobody with infected lesions should handle food, and this meant that the catering company had flaws in their system. Since management did not inspect or question the cooks about their health, and the cook was not aware of the potential risks of him handling the food. But even that mistake would have slipped by if the meals had been stored continuously at the recommended low temperatures. Again, this pointed the lesioned finger at the caterer's standards. The bad publicity and blow to the company reputation, his personal responsibility as the head of the Anchorage office, and losing face was too much for Kenji to bear. Just days after the incident, in his apartment in Anchorage, he took his own life. He had worked with the airline for 25 years, and many colleagues who were close to him mourned, along with his wife and four children. Despite this incident serving as a lesson for all airlines, an NBC News investigation indicated that the airline catering industry in America has little oversight, and outbreaks are not easy to track. The American FDA oversees food safety for airlines, but inspects the industry a lot less than restaurants. While restaurants are recommended for inspection, inspection every six months, airline caterers can expect one every three to five years. And for actual airlines, inspections occur randomly when time and opportunity allow. Even when they do happen, many violations can be found, but there are rarely consequences. While some states may independently choose to impose more regulations and inspections, there is no standard. 
From 2015 to 2019, the FDA found condensation dripping onto food, fans blowing dust onto meals, thermometers off by as many as 25 degrees, raw meat contaminating cooked meat, moldy bread, listeria contaminations, expired food usage, live insects and birds, and bird and rodent feces. From October 2008 until late 2019, the FDA issued almost 1,500 food safety citations to 16 airlines and the three major American airline caterers. Some of these included serious issues, like not keeping food at the correct temperature, and we all saw what that led to earlier. Despite the violations, no caterers have been shut down. According to food safety expert Gene Dibble, there are six foods to avoid if you are particularly worried about food safety on airplanes. Dairy products are most prone to spoiling when not stored in cold temperatures. Ice is a surprising one, but bacteria can survive on cubes and not all attendants may be diligent about washing their hands or wearing gloves while handling ice cubes. Deli meats are another thing to watch out for because they are consumed cold and don't go through a reheating process that can help kill bacteria. Raw fruits and vegetables have the same risks. With a melon, for example, bacteria can double every 20 minutes if the fruit is not properly stored. Other high-risk produce include leafy greens like lettuce and sprouts. Uncooked rice often contains bacteria that can survive cooking temperatures, and if the rice is cooled or sits in the wrong temperature, the spores can grow and make someone very sick. Rice needs to be reheated at 165 degrees Fahrenheit in order to be totally safe to eat. Finally, shrimp, a first-class staple, can host many undesirable pathogens. A 2015 study by Consumer Reports found that 60% of frozen shrimp tested were positive for Salmonella, Vibrio vulnificus, Listeria, or E. coli. 2% contained a superbug called Staphylococcus aureus. All seafood is risky, but shrimp and oysters are the most dangerous. Safer options include soup, stews, and curries that are usually reheated many times at high temperatures that kill bacteria. Bread rolls, crackers, packed baked goods, and those classic airplane pretzels are also pretty safe. So there's no need to cancel your upcoming trip or starve yourself on a flight. Just be aware of the risks and reputation of your airline catering company, as if there wasn't already enough to worry about while planning a vacation. Now, planes are definitely out of the question. That means the safest place I can travel to, factoring in all the risks, is the living room. That'll be fun. Based on our previous video about a man who secretly lived inside the walls of a shopping mall for four years, we asked Twitter, if you were forced to live in one of these places, which one would you choose? Here are the results.